Hello again. I had some recent requests lately to work with flesh tones and Copic markers. I've done this previously, but um, I thought I could work on it again. This is one of my stamps that I've drawn, and it's for sale at my stamp website that you can find on my webpage. Um, I did this one before, but it's a good one to practice on because it has a lot of open space that you can work on with shading and blending techniques. So today, we'll work on it. To begin with, I use the same three basic colors for working with flesh tones for Caucasian flesh skin tones. Um, you can experiment and use other ones, and I'm sure I will, but for now, these are the ones that I use. For my darkest color, I use E11. And I like to just uh, think about adding some shading. And I'll add it around places where I think I might find a shadow. Under the hairline. Uh, first of all, I've decided that my light source is going to be up here coming down towards her this way. So these things on this side are going to be more recessive. Whenever there's something that's in the foreground, like her arm is in front of her neck, I want to shade behind that. And that will give some dimension to the arm. Um, some of the natural shading that you'll notice on a face. It's the eye sockets, the nose, the bottom of the lip. And I'm going to do a little bit under her, on her hand right here. And for now, that's all I'm going to do with that color. My mid-tone is E00. And I'm going to go right over the same darker color and then pull it out just a little bit. Just to intensify those shadows. And help to take away the harsh line that might be there if I tried to blend a light color with it. One of the ways that you can <clears throat> learn how to do shadows with faces, I think, is to look at photographs. Look at look at your photographs, look at your pictures that you take, and see how the shadows play with the skin tones. Another thing that is very dramatic way, I think, is uh, take your photographs and if you have a photo editing program, put them in sepia or black and white because it really intensifies the shadows and you can learn a lot about shading by looking at those. But for now we're just going to use our imagination. And then my lightest color is E000. And I'm going to add some more and we'll ignore my cell phone. <laughs> and I'll just keep on experimenting with this. I do apologize for my cell phone. I should have turned it off before I started this video, but I didn't think of it, and I wish I had. But anyway, I just keep adding in some shadows, making the cheekbones. I do something a little bit different, and that is I like to leave white in my art and it's not really the way 
that some people are taught to use Copic markers and um, the way that I was taught to do it was to color in everything and light and then build up with your darker colors and and it looks fine it looks really good when people do that if they've got a talent for it I don't feel like I have a talent for it and I like to leave white I like the white to be my lightest color not in every case but in most cases I, I do that and it's just the way that works for me and that's the nice thing about anything that you work with in art or in coloring is you're going to find the way that works the best for you and and that's probably the way that you're going to run with it and it, it never hurts to practice 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 I'm just adding some darker color back in here. The nice thing about stamping images is you can stamp this image as many times as you want to and practice all you want with it. But when you are coloring something, such as if you were doing a picture like this, if you were mostly concerned about the face, doing the skin, or the hair, then that's what you should start with because there's a good chance you're not going to like it and you're going to toss it and it's going to be such a waste of time if you took the time to color in the hair and the sky and whatever else. So start with the most challenging part and get it out of the way first and then go from there. Now, I could add some skin, like some blush to her skin right now. But I'm not sure I'm going to because I want it to be a more natural. Although, if you do, okay, I will go ahead. If you do add some blush color, it's difficult to blend it in on a large surface like that unless you're willing to just be really patient and not go over it again with your lighter color and just experiment bringing that color up and it becomes less harsh so really I guess the bottom line to all of this is study photographs, look at pictures, st stare at people I'm going to wonder what you're looking at, but take your time to really look at light and shadows. And honestly, turn your photos into black and white photos or, or sepia or something along the lines of that. And you can see where all the light and shadows are. And then you'll be more happy with your results. Anyway, I hope this gave you a few more tips. And um, if you have any more questions or suggestions, um, feel free to drop me a line. And this stamp is available right now at shellybeanstamps.blogspot.com. Thank you. Have a nice day.